Hi everyone, my name is Maria. You may remember me from the morning classes of pump and yoga. I'm really excited to be here and doing this today for you. Today's demonstration is about a push-up, your favorite exercise and mine. And given that we have <clears throat> a push-up challenge coming up, I know that for you this is going to be very beneficial. So first of all, thank you so very much for making the time to be here with me to watch this demonstration. This is going to be a little bit technical, but I, I do hope to break it down for you, give you some options that will be at a level that you may feel comfortable and a level that you want, may want to challenge yourself. But with any exercise, please remember that really you need to use some common sense. Listen to your body because this is really, um, we don't know you, we don't know your situation. So if it doesn't feel good, the rule is you just don't do it. And obviously when you're working at home, whether in, in the house or outside, make sure you've got clear space around you to work in safely. Lighting, if you're working inside a mat or something that you're gonna be comfortable in, towel and some water to stay hydrated. We need to make sure that you look after you. And today my workout is going to be very much explaining what the push-up is all about. I mean, why do a push-up? Who wants to do a push-up? A push-up is an absolutely functional, multifunctional exercise. It works 70% of your body, uh, at least, on a lot of the major and minor muscles. It is a strength, it is a coordination, it is an ability, it is a power exercise that you can do it for many, many purposes as a warm-up, as a cool-down, as part of your conditioning, and as part of any type of workout. And really, it's all about where you are with your push-up. Now, I'm gonna go through um, a couple of options for you. There are countless ways to do a push-up, and in this demonstration today, we don't have time for that, but we're going to go through what is termed a military push-up or the very standard push-up that you see a lot of. And basically, it means that we're going to have our hands in a certain position and our feet in a certain position. So, come down with me to the floor. So, now I'm gonna turn onto the side so you can see what I'm doing. So, first of all, we wanna make sure that our knees are about hip width apart. Okay, so they're your hip width apart. This is my hip width apart. Okay, we're gonna make sure that our shoulders are sitting back well away from our ears because we want that scapula engaged because once your scapula is engaged, that means that your body will know to send that message to the brain to engage your abdominals. It's kind of like two for the price of one. So, coming down to the floor, our first option, and this is kind of like a beginner level, if you're not sure where to go, or maybe if you're pregnant as well, this is a good option, is to have our hands much wider than our shoulders. Now, if I lift my hands up the Mexican way, you will see that my elbow is lined up with my shoulders and my palms are facing you and my fingers are spread out. That is ideally where you would want your hand and arm position to be when you are starting your push-up. Okay, so back to the side. Come with me. Back down to the floor. My hands are wide with my shoulders. My knees are hip-width apart. I've got a nice long spine and I'm looking at my imaginary clock in front of me that says 12 o'clock. It's not lunchtime, so stay with me. So here is my imaginary clock at 12 o'clock. I've got a long spine. If I put my cappuccino on my back, it won't spill. And let me tell you, you don't want my coffee to spill. So my coffee is on my back. My abdominals are engaged. And now what I'm going to simply do is take my nose to the floor and straight back up. So that's from the side. Now let me show you from the front. Nothing's changed with my position. Nose towards the floor and straight back up. And you will see that as I come down to the floor, my elbow is below my shoulder. And I'll tell you why that is like that. If you have any shoulder concerns, any, any kind of twitches or twinges, keep that elbow either a little bit higher or parallel. If you want to go a little bit deeper and make that push up harder, then you drop that elbow. Let me show you. Come back down to the floor. So we have our hands wider than our shoulders. So I want to go a little bit easy today because I'm not feeling very well, and there's my option. But I'm thinking, no, I do feel pretty good. I want to work a little bit harder, then I take it a little bit deeper. And that's the beauty about a push-up. You can make it as easy or as hard as you want to. So that's kind of like a base level push-up. But I know that you do want to improve your fitness and your strength. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. Let's go to level two. Back down to the floor with me. So we take the Mexican wave hands, okay? 
elbow lined up with my shoulder, palms facing forward, fingers spread out. I'm going to take my hands straight down to the floor and then I'm going to slide my feet straight back. My feet stay on the floor and I'll explain why in a minute. And I'm going to drop straight down to the floor and then straight back up. Did you see that? Come with me onto the side. Mexican white hands, nice strong straight back, eyes are looking ahead, abdominals engaged. Drop my hands to the floor, eyes at 12 o'clock, slide my knees back. My feet are on the floor, nose to the floor, straight back up. Step in, help yourself up if you need to. So that's a little bit more advanced. Now you notice that on both of those push-up options, my feet are on the floor, and I'll tell you why. As soon as we lift our feet off the floor to do a push-up, we actually hyperextend our back. Now what that means is that our back will dip, and that's not good for you. We want our back in a neutral spine. When our back dips in a push-up position, our core muscles cannot engage safely, which means you're not really working your abdominals. So we want to make sure that by eliminate, to eliminate that issue, we put our feet on the floor, your abdominals are engaged, your back is safe, you're looking good. Option three, I know you want to do this one. Tell me to the floor. Mexican wave hands, here we go. Remember the first one? Second one? I know you've been waiting for this. Third one. Walk my hands in, step up. Now don't get excited, don't go for do 100 yet, but let's do one more so you can see from the front what it looks like. Mexican wave hands, come down to the knees, drop my hands to the floor, slide my feet back, onto the toes, nose to the floor, step it in. Help yourself up if you need to. So, I've shown you three options today. Push up from all fours, push up from the knees, and push up from the toes. Which one do you do when? Well, that really depends on you, how you feel, how much time you have, and what your workout is all about. However, what is important that in every type of workout that it's possible, include some form of strength training. Remember the push up works your triceps, your chest, back extensor muscles, abdominals, as well as the deeper abdominal muscles that we don't see from the outside, but we know they're there. Can help to strengthen your pelvic floor. Remember to turn it on, help to strengthen your glutes. Your glutes, strong glutes, help to support your back. And one more thing that's really, really important, please breathe. Breathe through those movements. When you breathe, your body uses that oxygen to supply it to your muscles so that you stay safe. Well, I hope this demonstration today has been of benefit to you. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to present it to you. I really am looking forward to teaching uh, classes back at the center. So for me, Maria, over and out, have an amazing, amazing day. Thank you.